You're in charge of hiring and Indeed has solutions, like our library of job description templates which are free and easy to customise. And we give you this toy monkey, who will bang its symbols when the right CV appears on your desktop. OK, there is no monkey. There is no monkey. But there are free job descriptions. See why more than 250,000 companies in the UK use Indeed for hiring. Visit indeed.com slash start today to use our library of completely free job description templates. Terms and conditions apply. Get ready for Brexit. There will be important changes to the way you do business after the UK leaves the EU. Come along to a free Brexit readiness event in your area to receive tailored advice to help you prepare your business. Search Brexit Business Readiness to find your nearest event and sign up now. Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you so very much for joining me. As many of us in the Northern Hemisphere know, winter is coming and the nights get up, come quicker and they take longer. And it's cold outside and it's just the kind of weather, I think, to curl up and listen to some very strange reports from across the world. Now, these are a collection of humanoid creature reports, and that usually means a creature with horns that some people would call Pan, some people would call Sheep Squatch or Goatman, or other names, depending on where you are in the world. And the first account comes from Tennessee, Washington County, the city being Johnson City, and it tells of a tall man with tapered horns. I was sitting on the side of the wall of a rather large hollow, which consisted of very thick underbrush and lots of evergreen and a larger valley leading to the first clearing. And then onto the graveyard, explained below. My cousin was with me and we were just sitting there for a spot of trapping, small game, hunting, for anything larger really that we may come across. All of a sudden, we heard the brush in the hollow below us rattling. And you could tell that whatever was making these sounds was rather large. And luckily, I had with me a Ruger 10-22 rifle and approximately about 150 rounds of ammo. I had it clipped and stacked and ready to go. I could barely make something out coming towards us. I did have the rifle equipped with a night vision scope and I could make out an outline of what appeared to be a man. Upon further inspection, though, I found that it was not... There were two very large walnut trees about 25 feet in front of us. Whatever came from the woods was using these trees for cover. But as it stepped out for what I took as a charge, I think, I opened fire. Within 2.5 seconds, I had emptied my first 25 round clip into the creature. And it was I was starting on my next. After all was said and done, and around 151 was entering the target. Nothing was happening. I suggested that we start to retreat to the house, and that was about 65 feet behind us. I had no more ammo in the 22, so I went for my 380 auto that I had a spare clipped in my leg. The thing that was freaking me out the most was that after all that shooting, 95% of which I know hit it, The creature was still, weaving back and forth between the trees. There were no screams and no apparent pain. It was as if nothing affected it. Now, the creature I saw was about seven to eight feet tall, and I guess I would say around 450 to 500 pounds. It was covered with thick black fur, and it did in fact resemble the ever so popular Bigfoot image that you get, that each and every one of us are quite familiar with except the fact that this was slimmer in shape, almost skinny, and it did in fact have a neck, also protruding on either side of its head, round about where you'd expect to see ears, were long tapered horns that were also black in colour. On the top of the head also resided a horn pointing straight up. All horns were approximately five to six inches in length, and they were the same dark colour as the creature. We finally made it to the house, and after a sleepless night, we got up the next morning to see if we could find anything. All we saw were a lot of spent shell casings. Between the two walnut trees, there were about seven or eight bullet holes in both of them, meaning I had struck my target numerous times, and the ground looked like it had been danced upon. 
Upon that, this concludes my true story of how one night I did indeed dance with the devil. Upon later inspection, we were shocked to discover that each trap that we'd set had been sprung and all the bait had been extracted. Having seen this, we returned home to double-check the traps to make sure they were set correctly and that they operated properly. I was looking for my pre-teenage cousins to be my guinea pig, but after careful consideration, I found a stick that was almost as good. The traps were then placed at different locations around the previous activities and we received the same disappointing results. So no further traps were set. But a hike up the easternmost ridge revealed a quite large system of tunnels made up of brush and varying sizes of tree limbs and vines and leaves intertwined. These catacombs, as I call them, were obviously not made by man, as you could tell from the construction. They were approximately two and a half to two feet tall and about four feet wide, and they were made up into three passageways interwining into a main chamber within the centre. When we discovered these, I was convinced we'd found the lair of the beast. We all got the same we were being watched feeling in the woods as well, and we decided to leave rather quickly and return home. Now, another area of America, um, Jasper, Arkansas, is a really strange report of a strange cat-like being that also had horns. And the witness stated, I've seen this strange creature very close and I saw it in Jasper, Arkansas. Oh, it's Arkansas. Sorry, I must apologise for that, my Britishness there. Arkansas. Deborah. I have lived in Arkansas, Ozarks, for over 20 years. And I never knew what it was until recently. And that was only by doing some research. And I do believe now I know where they're living. I had a first visual sighting of one when I was driving. And the creature was standing just off Highway 65, almost on Highway 256, and I was heading towards Welcome Home. When I saw it, I couldn't believe my eyes. I'd never seen anything like it. What shocked me the most, and what was most memorable, was the horns coming out of its forehead. It was very much cat-like, but it was its face, with its horns that really shocked me. I drove as if in shock from a car crash, not believing what I'd seen. Until, as I said, I started doing research on the subject. Now, for over 10 years, in a remote region close to Mountain View, Arkansas, you can also hear them howl every single night, usually after midnight. Now, I never knew what it was until I did the research. I started asking people around there if they'd seen it. And it is impossible to describe. The noise it makes, well, it's very elk-like, almost like a horn, but definitely a howl. If anyone was brave enough to come with me, I can show you exactly where to go to hear this and where I made visual contact. Now, a bipedal creature with fangs and horns in Amish County. An ungodly-looking creature created havoc among the local God-fearing Amish community. The witnesses described the creature as the size of a good heifer, grey in colour with a white mane. It had tiger-like fangs and curved horns like a billy goat. It ran upwards on long legs and had long, grisly claws. In one incident, the creature sent a team of horses and two brothers flying when it approached their hay wagon. The following day, A man was cutting weeds on his farm about five miles from the previous incident when he heard a fierce roar and turned to see a monster with three horns and a tail charging in his direction. Now he raised his side to defend himself only to have the implement ripped from his hands and at that point the man wisely decided to turn both cheeks to the monster and escaped as fast as he could run. Now, a day later, a woman who was feeding poultry on a farm midway between the two earlier incidents, when she heard a commotion and turned to see the creature in the act of snatching a goose and it had one in each of its hands. And she bravely ran towards the thing, waving her apron. Now, the woman managed to recover one of her geese when the creature threw it at her, knocking her to the ground in the process. 
and the interloper then escaped with the remaining bird in its hand. A goat man with hooves and horns. Now the witness making this report was on his way home late one night after work and he almost always walked the train tracks home because they were a straight shot towards the house, a shortcut almost. Now these train tracks run past the cemetery which was alleged to have been haunted as it was an old settler cemetery. And it's already dark and he's been walking for a few hours now and there's no moon that night. And as he walks near the cemetery, he starts hearing muffled footsteps behind him. But he doesn't think much of it. Plenty of other guys walk home this way as well. So he keeps going. And the footsteps get louder and louder. About midway past the cemetery, he gets nervous and the steps are getting closer. So he turns to look behind him and he is confronted with a hideous sight. According to the witness, he saw a goat man or the devil himself. He describes this thing as a man who basically had goat's hooves and horns along the lines of the mythical pan. And this thing was heading straight for him. Reportedly, all the snow around the creature was instantly melting as it walked through. The witness then runs off screaming like a banshee and he hears the clopping of the beast's footsteps behind him as they speed up to catch him as he's running. Finally, he gets past the graveyard and sees the thing stops right on the edge of the cemetery. He continues running. He stops, looks back and the beast just vanishes. Now, one of the older coal workers he confided in said that there was a tale about a goatman for many years now it was supposedly a Polish immigrant who disappeared one night but returned as the creature several years later. There have been UFO and strange being reports around the same time that the man had vanished and reports of lights and strange sounds were also reported by local residents. A dog man with red eyes, claws and hooves. My daughter and I decided to take our horses out riding like we occasionally did, and we were in the Lakeland area by Blackwood, New Jersey coast. It was August 9, 1976. I remember the date because we knew Hurricane Bell was soon to hit the Jersey coast, so we wanted to get some riding in before that happened. It was a really windy day, but we followed the usual trails going along the dirt paths that were close to the junkyard. We approached one section of the woods when suddenly there was dead silence. We usually heard all sorts of wildlife in the area, but we heard nothing. Then a crow called loudly three times, and the horse started acting up. And we couldn't figure out what was going on. And then, up in front of us, about 100 feet or so away, we saw this thing. It was about six feet tall. Its back, which it was scratching against the tree, was facing towards us. At first, to me... It looked like a large dog on top of a horse. I asked my daughter, what's that? And it started walking along the path we were riding on and we slowly followed up the hill. But the horses were reluctant to stay calm. They started to go in a bit wild. The thing turned around and I could better see what it looked like. It had whitish hair with black spots on its hips. It had horns coming out of its head and red slanted eyes its nose it had like a pig's snout it stood on two feet that ended in cloven hooves and its hands were tipped with large claws and it looked like it was slobbering all over it jumped onto the path with its arms open wide it lowered its head like it was going to charge us and at this time, I felt as though I was in some kind of trance. I couldn't move. It was like I was in a movie or something like that. I was watching it from afar. It was only when my daughter yelled, let's turn around and get out of here, is when I realised we might be in danger and I snapped too. We were certainly afraid of whatever it was. And then it did charge at us. It tucked its arms in and it was running like the bionic man. It tried to grab one of the horse's tails and we took off. When I looked back, I noticed it had stopped and it had stopped in the spot we'd taken off from. Just like in the movies, after we got away from this thing, we saw 
a Washington Township police car by the junkyard and we told the policeman driving that there was a very strange creature in the woods and that it had come after us and we described it to him. And the policeman said, well, I hope we don't catch it. And he started to fill out a report. But amazingly, this thing showed up in the junkyard when he was there and we all saw it. And we saw it as it hopped over the eight-foot fence and it galloped in front of the police car and then ran off into the woods. After that, we took the horses right back to the stables. The policeman wanted my address so he could speak with me later. But I didn't make it home in time. He'd already come and gone by the time I got home. And I never found out if he filed a report. Maybe he just didn't want to report it. Later on, the owner of a local ranch told me that one time he found one of his horses dead in the field with its stomach ripped open. And I'm telling you, I believe there is something out there. There were three witnesses that day and my daughter and I can recall vividly every moment of our encounter with this thing. Even after 40 years, I will never forget it. I've never told this story to anyone outside of the family but my daughter convinced me that we should report it. A strange humanoid with horns, claws and bat wings. John, in Salt Lake City, Utah, wanted to tell of a bizarre encounter he'd heard about. He said, I got a very unbelievable story to tell you and I don't know if you're familiar with the Skinwalker Ranch over here in Utah. I have a close relative that's pretty much the UFI old guy in the area. And he's been telling me these stories ever since I was a little kid. So I've been out to that ranch several times. And I was out there last spring, which would be 2013, and nothing happened. We went around the ranch areas and just nothing happened. So we went home and that was a Friday night. On the Saturday night, something did happen when I later found out through my UFO relative. There were some young Native American kids teenagers and they were driving in a tall truck about eight feet high and they went up to the gate of this ufo ranch they said that they saw an orb of light appearing in the window off or above the gate and i guess that they turned on their light so they turned on their engine because they got scared then it had even a brighter light came at them and he went over their truck and these kids well something hit the truck they got scared, so they went down the road to the main road and then they got out, which is, I'm guessing, about three quarters of a mile away. They got out to look at the damage done to the truck and for some reason, the driver decided to be the passenger and then the passenger was the driver. Apparently, there were some girls with them in this truck as well. Well, once they got back to the truck, and this is where it gets very unbelievable, he says, a creature grabbed one of the children who was the driver, who was now in the passenger seat. And it pulled him out of the truck. It threw him around like a rag doll. It bit him on the butt several times and clawed him. Long story short, somehow this kid got back into the truck and one of the kids took a picture of the creature. They got really scared. They were able to get back to their truck. And they drove down the road and they talked to the youth Native American police officer because it's a youth territory over there. And the youth police said there was nothing they can do about it because they're very well aware of the Skinwalker Ranch. So the next day, which would be the Sunday, they contacted my UFO relative and he went down there to investigate. Now, meanwhile, there was a shaman's wife and the shaman was there blessing the kids that were involved in the incident. My relative, who was into the UFO, said that he saw the picture on the cell phone of the creature that the children had took and he also saw the damage done to the truck. There was also scratching into the truck, the word that looked like die, D-I-E. And he also saw the damage done to the kid and the bite marks on him. Now, this was very unbelievable for me to hear, he says. And the crazy thing about it is, a few months ago, I worked at a hospital. And one of my patients was actually the shaman's wife. And she was the one that was also there at the time that my relatives were there to investigate. And she told me exactly what my relative said, but in much greater detail. The creature that she described, and also my relative said, 
had to be a tall creature because he would hold this kid. He held this kid out of the window. That's an eight-foot truck, and this creature had horns. It had red hair. It had a human-like face, but the mouth was distorted, and it came out kind of like a wolf. It had claws, and it had bat's wings. So my question to you is, and I also asked my UFO relative, is this from singing Walker Ranch? And he says, no, this is something totally different. And I also asked the shaman's wife and she agreed that it was something totally different. Other reports of strange horned humanoid creatures are reported worldwide. And many states in the US and in the UK have local or regional names for the creatures. But the description seems to be very similar. Now, not always described as white, but most of them are described as white. And in parts of West Virginia... Some folks swear that a huge pale creature exists down there. Around the Boone, Kawar and Mason and Putnam counties, there have been sightings of what some call the white thing and others call it the sheep squatch. Now, sheep squatch appears to be very large, very bulky build. The beast is often described as being white in colour with woolly fur about the size of a bear with a pointed head and goat's horns and sharp possum-like teeth. Now, in 1999, a group of campers heard something they thought was a bear. Suddenly, Sheep Squatch ran into their campsite, let out a blood-curdling scream, which naturally caused the campers to make haste in getting out of there. And as they ran for their lives, they reported that the beast just stood in the camp and stared at them. When they came back the next day to collect their things, they found everything had been ransacked by the monster. There had been more recent reports too, as recently as 2015, when another group of campers at Fulks Run, near the Virginia-West Virginia border, spotted a sheep squatch type creature standing on the hill outside a camp. As they stood there, the beast began to run down the hill towards them until it got to the river between it and the camp. After finally proceeding to cross the river, an unearthly shriek came from the woods, which apparently scared the mighty sheep squatch. The beast quietly slipped away into the hiding in the woods. No word on what these campers did for the rest of the night, and that was the end of the tale. Now, as I said, these reports come in from all across the world. There are a couple of them in the UK. We have um, a couple in the Grimsby area, if I remember, on the northeast coast. And we have one in the Gloucestershire area, just off the seven. But I'll double check on it. I'll get back to you on that. But I do distinctly remember three accounts of humanoid-looking creatures that completely covered in hair with horns in the UK. And we also have the devil's footprints, if you remember, that very strange case from when most of England was snowed in in the heavy snow and a set of cloven hooves was seen to travel miles across the country. Now, many people say, oh, well, that was the, you know, that was in the Victorian days. But it actually happened in Scotland not too long ago. I think it was 2012. And it is actually out there on the um, uh, Google, if you want to look it up, and you can see the prints. And they look like cloven hooves, well, cross walls and across, you know, as if something had run up the side of the house and over the house and down and across the stone walls and off into the countryside for miles and miles and miles. So have you had an encounter with something very strange that had horns or looked like it maybe had horns anywhere in the world? Um, Or would you like to help us look for these accounts, join our membership and uh, become a member of BBR and do this kind of thing yourself? Or if you just enjoy the the uploads, uh, you're very welcome. But get in touch with me at debbiehatswell at gmail.com for anything that you need or any report that you need to make and I'll pop it over to the admin team and we'll get on it. So until next time, I hope you have a lovely evening and it's not too cold tonight. Turn the fire up or chuck another log on the on the you know on the wood there and get it going. I'm gonna have a cup of tea and I'm gonna chill out and I'm gonna go to bed. So until next time, good night. You're in charge of hiring and Indeed has solutions, like our library of job description templates which are free and easy to customise. And we give you this toy monkey who will bang its symbols when the right CV appears on your desktop. OK, there is no monkey. There is no monkey. But there are free job descriptions. 
See why more than 250,000 companies in the UK use Indeed for hiring. Visit indeed.com slash start today to use our library of completely free job description templates. Terms and conditions apply. Get ready for Brexit. There will be important changes to the way you do business after the UK leaves the EU. Come along to a free Brexit readiness event in your area to receive tailored advice to help you prepare your business. Search Brexit Business Readiness to find your nearest event and sign up now.